Hello there YouTube, I am Wheelchair21 and on today's rolling review we are looking at Super Mini Pla Koryu Sentai Zuranger Dragon Seesaw, which is the second Sentai related Super Mini Pla in the line and it's not going to be the last as we already have seen through leaks on the internet or at least actual professional leaks through Bandai's various blogs and websites. So before we get into the actual freaking dragon seats are at hand, let's take a moment to look at this wonderful box. Now, for most of us Americans that grew up in North America, we know this for being Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Dragon Zord, and the Dragon Ranger is the Green Ranger Tommy. Now, the one thing I do love about the mini plot box at hand is the fact that it really is freaking a homage to the original Deluxe Mecha. Now, I didn't state that in the Super Mini Pla Daijujin review due to the fact at the time I wasn't aware of it, or at least it did not catch my eye. Like, I did not go, oh crap, this is a homage. And since it's a homage, it actually tries to replicate a lot of the artwork in the original box art, not just from the front end of the box, but to the side of the box presenting Zhute Daijujin and Goryujin, which is Dragon Zord Battle Mode, or the Mega Dragon Mega Zord, as well as the way of the combination using Mastodon or Mammoth, Triceratops, and the Sabertooth Tiger, and the other Guardian Beasts becoming Zhute, as well as showing the form that Visible Ninja does not like, where you attach the tail and the torso to the form. Now, on the side here, we have some stats, such as the length is 62 meters from head to tail when it's, you know, stretched out, its height is 38 meters tall, and its weight is 170 tons. Now, the height of being at 38 meters is kind of crazy due to the fact that the suit was actually quite bigger and bulkier and about the size of Dai Jujin. However, one could chalk that all up due to scaling and suit actors. Now, here we have Super Mini Plod Dragon Caesar fully assembled as one seen in the beginning of the video. But first off, let's take a brief look at some of the additional pieces for when it becomes Go Ryujin. Now, Unlike the Deluxe Mecha, where the jaw drops down to reveal your face, it has a three-segmented piece to replace it. One thing about it is that the Super Mini Pla come with these nice pre-painted sculpted faces and heads that, when you insert it into your Mecha, gives it a more wonderful, realistic design, rather than having to apply a sticker. Now, the cool thing, like I said, though, about having the fact that it's not the original jaw dropping down and becoming your face it's the fact that you get this little placer here. Because as a lot of people remember, there used to be a huge gap when it becomes the Dragon Zord battle mode. And this here actually rectifies the old issue of the whole floppy face scenario of that mode, which people rarely even displayed it with, due to the fact the freaking stand and the freaking staff end of the drill in saber mode or the drill in sa staff mode would get lost by people, as well as if you bought it at second-hand markets, wasn't normally with the actual thing on, say, like eBay or whatnot. So having it in mini plot form, you're assured to have it. The only flaw about it is you may want to consider putting some, like, clear nail polish around the brim of the connector here, due to the fact that it just kind of pops in and out really easily. It's not that snug as compared to other uh, mini pla weapons that actually stay firmly together. Hell, if this was one solid piece and they just threw it in there, it probably would have been a whole lot nicer. Now, Dragon Caesar for himself is pretty spot on to your deluxe mecha, as well as has quite a bit of articulation in areas that, well, one would only find in the North American Legacy line, such as this nice segmented tail, which can either stiffen up due to how the ball joint sockets work, where you can actually make it straight, spin the tail, spin all the joints, whichever freaking way you want. And it's easy to take apart due to the fact that it's all ball jointed sockets. That's the one thing I really do enjoy is the depth of the tail, as well as the accuracy, since the actual suit had, I think, a five-segment detail before you got to the actual giant end drill tip, it has that actual realistic flow about it, as well as the fact that we now have ankle articulation, we have knee articulation, we have hip articulation, there is no waist articulation due to how it clamps down, we have the basic karate chopping hands that the original one had, 
as well as a bit of the rotation in the hands to lock it into place for Dragon Zord battle mode or Mega Dragon Zord combination or Zute Daijujin. Now I'm going to use probably most likely the American names frequently throughout the video, so please don't be offended due to the fact that for North Americans, they're more accustomed to that name than Dragon Seesaw. One thing though that is missing is the fact that these jewels don't naturally light up. Like the actual deluxe toy, there is no way to really make it light up unless someone's really good at finding a way to put an LED light in the entire freaking system. The head, very wonderful. I do love the actual uh, gold plastic they give you. I do fear though that this could end up being like uh, GPS where this could become uh, bad, brittle, and break. But cool aspects are they do give you these nice metallic stickers to highlight the accents, not just in the gold dragon uh, logo, but in the actual head of the crown, in the blade here, as well as the bottom of the feet, which are honestly the nicest. When I originally saw the work put into this, I thought they were pre-molded to look metallic and gold, so I thought that if you just lightly tapped it, it would be, you know, scraped, it would be scratched, it could be, you know, damaged. But it's a sticker, and that's kind of cool, but it's also kind of fearful due to the fact that, you know, sticker glue can wear out and they can fall off. But overall, you know, it's really nice. And to, like, stand it up against Daijujin for scale, it's actually pretty freaking cumbersome. Not as cumbersome as it was in the show where it was actually just as big as even bigger than Daijujin. But I'll let you guys see it for yourself. For the height, to give it a good example, it goes up right to the breast line where in the show they were naturally the same height due to, you know, the suits and the suit actors. So one would expect Dragon Caesar to be up about here in height where in actuality when you do proportionate scaling, it's no bigger than maybe your Tyrannosaurus when you take apart the entire Daijujin assembly or just literally around the area of where I think the cockpit is supposed to be for Daijujin. And, you know, that's not really a problem for me since, you know, scaling is kind of what is going on with the whole mini plow line as well as the overall idea of the Guardian Beasts. Why should the Guardian Beasts that are not, in a sense, King Brachion be bigger than your overall, you know, separate individual mechas. And for another way of height scaling, I'm going to take an old-fashioned MMPR monster figure, and they're roughly the same height, meaning this is about five to five and a half inches tall. I purposely use draw mole due to the fact that it's one of the few Zhu Ranger to Zhu 2 footage monsters that I had on me, aside from the Stag Beetle, which appeared in season two pretty much of Power Rangers. So this is a good, you know, size comparison of what you're really dealing with. Now here we have Go Ryujin, where honestly the only flaw about this form or this figure is really the staff. The staff is very heavy, it's very hefty, it's very cumbersome, and actually does not go with the overall elbow joint or the elbow sturdiness of the overall form. As well as to try to actually get it to look like it does in the show, to stab and, in a sense, penetrate the opponent to destroy it and kill it. There's no extra handle to give it any bit of, I guess, extra stability when being held to ram it into your monster. That is probably one of my biggest complaints, is that it sort of could have used an extra handle coming out of this point here, just to hold it with both hands and ramrod your other figures to recreate the actual finishing blow. However, the points of articulation are still roughly the same from when it is Daijujin. I'm just going to take off the staff right here, keep the handle locked in place as if it's still holding it, because we still have a bit of knee articulation or thigh articulation. The knees still a little bit stupid at how they're designed, but I still, in a, in a sense, just deal with it due to the fact that all I really use these for are display pieces. I don't really go extensively out imposing them, and I don't need to really play with them. I just want them on my table to look nice and look purdy. Now, the thing I like is honestly Goryujin or Dragon Sword Battle Mode. It's always been really just an elegant design for me, and I've always liked its idea of being a four-piece mecha. And what I actually used to love about it as a kid was the fact that for me, it was actually easier to draw 
this form than it was to draw the Megazord or Daijujin. For Jute Daijujin, it's actually sturdier if you remove the freaking ball joint areas of the Sabertooth Tiger and the Triceratops just to keep it sturdier and balanced. Now, the reason I say that is because with ball joint ankles, it usually can loosen up over time and ruin the stability of your overall figure or mecha. So I, you know, unplugged them and inserted them as if they were going to be their individual uh, mecha piece. So now the one thing I've always wanted to know in question is why does the tail clip onto the feet and why do, on the right foot and why does the actual freaking like main core stomach of the Dragon Zord or uh, Dragon Seats are clipped to the left foot? Now, promotional art has shown, as well as unused, like, footage from the series, that it was supposed to be some sort of way of an alternative weapon, like maybe the foot was supposed to rise up and be used, like, as an arm, like an, like, an full forearm-based weapon, where it would, like, pull up with it and be able to be thrusted and jabbed, and this was supposed to be, like, some kind of used as a defense mechanism, like, to shoot beams or absorb beams or reflect beams. No one really knows. It's just like, it was an idea, it was too stupid or too hefty for the suit actor to move around in, so they just completely removed it. Now, the articulation in the mecha is quite hindered, but pretty basic to what the suit actor could do in show, by lifting up his arms and walking up and down, very robotic -y or soldier-like, as well as still being able to move one's legs. But overall, it's very nice. I really do love the detail that goes into this and the overall mini plot that's at hand. The fact that we have a nice, good, golden piece of plastic to symbolize the breastplate is splendid. The nice metallic freaking stickers blend real well and stand out, giving you that almost deluxe-esque like design. And it just looks good, and it's quite sturdy. There's a quite a bit of lot of stability put into this due to the added peg of the actual Dragon Seesaw head where it pulls out, plugs into your mastodon or your mammoth, and then you can plug in your tail into that to keep it even more balanced. And honestly, in the individual form, as we saw, it has wide range of articulation, whether it's Goryujin or Dragon Seesaw alone, which makes it great to put on display, like I said, with your old MMPR villain figures to recreate Megazord battle sequences. I mean, just look at the heftiness and scaling that it has to a lot of these old-school 5.5 to 6-inch figures. It's wonderful and good for recreational purposes for one's desk, especially if you have, like, the Tamashi City effects. Honestly, I don't see why people should be passing up on this chance to have a Super Mini Plot. Now, they are a little bit expensive from the range of 40 to $60. However, due to the fact that Bluefin Tamashi is now, in a sense, going to be distributing at least the freaking... Uh, Koyuja versions, not Koyuja, uh, Ju Ranger versions to America as MMPR mini pla. I think the prices will be a little bit more reasonable due to the fact that they're like a premium Bandai esque level of a high grade for you know non Gundam collectors or non Gundam you know kits related. So overall, it's worth the purchase and well worth it to have on display. Now, people are going to probably be pissed because, oh, it's not too big, it, it's very small, and, oh, I have to assemble it. But that's the fun about it. Anyways, I'm Wheelchair21, and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it to a friend, and subscribe to my channel if you're already not a subscriber. As well as check me out at Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and at various websites like Hero Club, Hero Taku, so on and so forth. And I'll see you all next time.